Hello all, welcome to the floor. I just, uh, obviously getting on with the van now, finally. The garden is in a state where I'm happy to just put it down for a bit. We've got it roughly back together. I'll show you in a bit. But yeah, let's talk about this. I wanted to, I wanted to share a bit of useful advice, I think. So, yeah, the old saying, a bad workman always blames his tools. I'm, for the most part, in agreement with that. You know, to a point, anyway. I think that is right. Uh, if you're not skilled with something, then, you know, it's very easy to blame the tool and not the user. And that's kind of what's happened here. <laughs> but what I, what I wanted to talk to you about is knowing when to realise that that is the case. So I made a start on this uh, yesterday or the day before, I'm not sure. And I was out here for hours absolutely losing my head because you can't really see from there. I'll probably give you a close-up in a minute. These are the bolts that, uh, where the frame was stuck in, they all snapped and then they were snapped inside the frame. So I've had to like cut a square, take the whole lot out. And then the intention was to put the square back because it'll be an exact fit, which it is. Um, and then have new bolts coming this way out instead rather than it used to have a nut in the frame but now the bolt is in the frame and then I'll slide the uh, the subframe up and put nuts on the bottom doesn't really make any difference which way it goes as long as it's bolted to it and there's three bolts on each which are all wrecked basically there's two with small captive nuts inside the frame and then there's one with a large must be like a tube or something with thread in it and that's all welded in and those ones actually snapped clean off when I tried to undo them so I've only done one side so far the other side is still as it was um, but to the point so I should really have shown you this while I was doing it but I was so cross that wouldn't have made for good viewing so, you know, it was all going well to a point. What I did was the, the square of metal with the hole in it that I cut out, I then put on the new bolt and my plan was to weld the bolt to that um, so that it stays in place and then I can turn a nut on from underneath. So I sort of managed to do that over there on the bench. It wasn't pretty. Uh, I was using the the welder that I had, the stick welder, which I've never been very good with anyway. And now, I should probably mention, I am by no means uh, even an amateur <laughs> at welding. I'm a complete novice. Yes, I managed to weld my whole van back together uh, and get it through an MOT, the big van. But, you know, it doesn't mean I'm good at it. I just managed to make metal stick to metal. So maybe I'm in, be in between a beginner and an amateur. I don't know. In other words, I'm crap, right? So just bear that in mind as we go forward. But I got the, the, the bolts welded to the little bits of metal and then I was going to sit them in hold them in place with a magnet so they're exactly flush where they're supposed to be and then weld around that seam sand it down, jobs are good and the frame will pop in and happy days um, yeah, I, I just could not do it I, I was lying under here, with this, bear in mind the stick welder I'll drop a little clip in of me using it
so you've got the uh, the torch, the holder, it's about this big, and then the stick clamps in the end, which is then about this long. So I'm under here, upside down. So <laughs> welding's hard enough as it is when you're on a bench and you can see what you're doing, but trying to do it upside down with a flipping stick that keeps trying to attach itself to the magnet. <laughs> It was just the most infuriating couple of hours I've had for a long time. My welding helmet actually ended up in the field at one point. And then yesterday, I mean, I, I, I knew this anyway. I don't know why I even bought a stick welder in the first place, because they are difficult to use. Uh, I just thought, I can't do this. And just I went to Eula on the bike and bought a gasless MIG, which is the same type of welder that I used to have back in England. Why I didn't get that sent over with my stuff, just don't even go there. <laughs> I had two two vans, two Luton vans that came over. I think I filmed it. Did I film a bit of it? I can't remember. But. Yeah, basically, one of them was full. That had all the bikes and most of the tools and whatever, all the heavy stuff. And then the other van, I only had, I think it was a 900 kilo limit per van. Uh, and, you know, obviously I can't, I'm not there, so I can't weigh the stuff, I don't know what's going in. So I was having to be very ruthless with what I told them to put in. And I didn't do the welder, because it's about 20 kilos. And yeah, when they actually turned up, we realised there was only 400 kilos in there. So I had another 500 spare. We just forget that. That's a distant memory. We don't need to uh, <laughs> delve back into that. However, I've come out to do it today with my new MIG welder. I've just done both of them first try in about half an hour. And that's it, it's done. So, you know, I'm not telling you all to go out and buy it, that's not the point of this. I'm just, what I want to say is like, yes, a bad workman blames his tools, but there is always a right tool for the job. And that can also depend on your skill level. Someone like me, who is a low skilled welder, a MIG, is far easier to use than a stick. Full stop. <laughs> it just is. You know, if you don't know what how these work, you have a button and then the wire. Come, there's a spool of wire in there and it comes out the end. So you just get it exactly where you want it, press the button and it starts coming out and then you do your welding. Whereas the stick welder, you're back here and you're trying to, oh, nightmare. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Another thing as well, so there's a, I don't know if I can touch this yet. Oh yeah, it's cooled down. So, the two, two bolts are the ones that are hanging out now. And the third one is that long threaded tube thing. That's been a bit, that I was telling you about. And that had a bolt in it up to about there this bolt that snapped off at the end now you know given my sort of past experience I know how to get stuff like that out or at least give yourself the best chance and that is with heat you've got to heat it up because then the metal the things surrounding this will then expand ever so slightly when it gets hot and it loosens it up and that was the case with this. So when I went to Eula, I also purchased a blowtorch because that's something we didn't have either. And there's been so many occasions where heat would have solved the problem, but it then snapped instead because I didn't have a blowtorch. So I just got this little, this thing. It was only about 12 quid or something. I think it was 150 set, I can't remember. But this just fits onto our gas bottles that we use in the vans. And these are about £1.50, I think they're 20 sec. 
and they're everywhere. You can get them from loads of shops. And that just pops on like that. And then a blowtorch. Which a bit of heat on that bolt and it started turning straight away with some grips. And then I remembered that I just bought a welder because I was having to do it, you know, an eighth of a turn, heat it back up, eighth of a turn. It, ridiculous. Yeah, just bought a new welder, so straight away thought I was welding nut on the end of it. And then I just spun it off in about 15 seconds with one heating. So, you know, it's... I just wanted to share, basically. I wanted to share if you're having a hard time with something, you, you know, you're struggling to fix something or whatever, just take a step back, have a look, assess the situation. Because, you know, when I was trying to do it before, ultimately, I was just wasting my time. Like, yeah, I've had to go out and buy this MIG, which was about 1,700 sec, so 140 quid maybe, I don't know. But this has now opened up a lot more possibilities. I need a welder here. I need to be able to weld. <laughs> Full stop. That's why I bought one. You have things like the tractor and, you know, all this machinery and things we have. It's going to break. And having the ability to weld is um, quite a big deal. It opens up a hell of a lot of doorways. Something goes from broke to repairable very quickly. So, yeah. That's it. I'm just going to, where I've welded, I'm going to go over it with a flat disc. See, if, make sure there's no spots that I need to touch up and whatever. A bit more weld in there, I don't know. Obviously it needs to be strong. But, you know, there's only so much stress on it because it's like pushing against the van, you know. It's not like it's holding the wheel on. Well, I guess technically it kind of is, because <laughs> it holds all of this gubbins on. Not the point. What I'm saying is I probably wouldn't be so confident, say if the wheel bolted straight onto this nut here, I probably wouldn't trust myself to weld that on, but I think I'm all right doing this. It feels pretty solid anyway. And it's the only way I could think to uh, to fix it. Because if I'd have tried to weld a new captive nut in there, the chances of me actually being able to line it all up are pretty slim. So I thought if I do it this way, if we're out a little bit, I could probably give it a smack and bend it so that it drops through the holes. But yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to share. I'll give you a whiz around the garden in a bit. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get cracked on with the other side because this one's now done. I just need to source another bolt to go in replacement of that because now I can just screw one in there. Good to go. Camera just switched off right at the end of that. A bit annoying. But I'll give you a quick look at this lot. So we filled it in a bit more and then I uh, took the Pajero over it last night, just over this section. It's gone down quite a bit, so that's good. We're actually getting some sand slash crushed stone off a of mate to go in here and bring it up a little bit. So that should be better because we've always had a dip here, which is really annoying. So we're going to put that in, compact that down, and that should be a lot better. And then, yeah, we're still a bit messy down here. All the tarps are up now, though, which is good. Everything survived. Very bright today. And then, yeah, we just need to deal with this bit. Squash that down a bit. And then this all needs really levelling off. Because this is quite bad. But that's fine. Oh, can't see. Yeah, all of this is too high. This needs to come into the ditch. Same down on this corner. 
We've just got too much dirt there. It all needs to come this way because this should actually be filled up about there somewhere. And then round here, we're also going to all of this bark we put down because we couldn't walk on it. We were just sliding straight into it. So put a bit of that down. Going to level it off again. And this is all getting sanded and compacted as well because this is going to be obviously the, the wood area and it'd be better if it's rock hard for pulling machines in and stuff and eventually this will have a roof going like that and will be enclosed but that's in the future just try to show you how I've done it so this one is the, the threaded tube that I was on about that goes up, I need to bolt into that and then that one and that one are the ones that I've took out and welded back in they're pretty solid, I mean I can yank on them and they're not going anywhere so hopefully we'll do the job and then this is how it looked before I'm about to start on this side so uh, I think that one's actually okay. That needs the heat on it. And then this one has snapped off, so I'm gonna have to cut that one out. But yeah, I'm gonna get on that in a minute, even though it's starting to flip and rain again now. Right, we're on the other side now. So this is what is inside the frame. And you can see that just a little probably that little tack weld maybe there as well that's all that was holding it in and this is the part of the frame that I've just cut out and that sits like that inside you see so there's no way to fix this without going into the frame and because of the access the only way to get in is through the bottom there but this one came out with the heat treatment no problem I did the same little trick welding a, a nut on the end of it heat it up pull it out that one's not broken so that must have come out okay so then here I just need to flatten out that piece and then weld another a new bolt to the back of it and then I'll be welding that back in there easy peasy